Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to re-explore Mars yet again and talk about what this beautiful planet may have looked like billions of years ago and what it was like in comparison to our Earth today. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So this video is going to be based on a previous video that I made where I talked about a scientific discovery of what Earth may have been like billions and billions of years ago, and specifically the idea that Earth may have been actually a lot hotter, specifically something like 75 degrees Celsius on average, which is a lot hotter than it is today. And don't ask me why I just collided something with Mars. It's just for visual effects and just for fun. This is not what we're going to, we're doing to Mars today. As a matter of fact, we're doing almost the opposite. So let's go to the solar system. And what we're going to imagine is we're going to go back in time and pretend this is like 4 billion years ago, maybe even more than that, 4.4 billion years ago when the solar system was still at its youth. Now, back then, all of the planets were slightly different. Um, Venus and Earth were also very, very different. And I've talked about the what Earth looked like in, in the previous video that you can actually find in, uh, in the link that you should see on the screen right now. But we're going to be talking about Mars and we're going to basically uh, use the data we have about Earth to imagine what Mars might have been like. So we know that Earth was about 60 degrees hotter on average. And that's because... Earth, and obviously Mars as well, were much, much hotter on the inside. Their core was actually a lot hotter, and this warmed up the surface as well. Even though the sun was actually a lot cooler and didn't produce as much heat, the actual planets were hotter. And also, at the same time, the planets had a lot more atmosphere back then, so we're going to reimagine this and we're going to turn Mars a little bit hotter. We're going to actually make this approximately 60 degrees hotter than it is right now, making it a comfortable, like, minus 3 degrees Celsius, approximately. And we'll do this very easily by basically moving Mars a little bit closer to the Sun, because that's, that's really how we can kind of imagine it to be warmer. So at a distance of about 0.9 astronomical units, so basically 90% distance of Earth from the Sun, the temperature gets to uh, be about 60 degrees or maybe 65 degrees warmer. And now Mars is basically going to start experiencing the various uh, seasons as well. Now, at this point, this is basically Mars about 4.4 billion years ago when it was a lot hotter on the inside, releasing a lot of heat that uh, warmed up the surface. And it also had a lot more atmosphere. And here we're going to increase this atmosphere and giving it maybe approximately one atmospheric uh, pressures just to simulate what it may have been like, although the atmospheric pressure might have been actually higher. Now, the tricky part is for Mars to actually get the liquid water. So if you ever look at uh, a schematic known as the phase diagram for water, you may discover that creating liquid water is actually not uh, very easy. You need to have very specific conditions, specific pressure, specific temperature, and temperature here usually needs to be over about zero degrees Celsius. It can be a little bit lower in certain conditions, but usually it has to be over zero degrees and usually lower than 100 degrees because that's the boiling po point of water. So the temperature on Mars has to be in this region, and we also need to have pressure of at least um, 600 Pascal or 611 Pascal, and we're already actually over that. So um, right now, to create a relatively permanent uh, liquid water on the surface of the planet at 4 degrees Celsius, we'll need to have at least about 10,000 Pascal of pressure, which is, in terms of the actual atmospheres, is about uh, like 10% of atmospheric pressures on the surface of Earth. So it's not a lot. So we're going to go with 0.1 atmospheric pressures. And this will allow us to have liquid water here. Now, it might have been actually more than that. It might have been more than 10% of um, atmospheres. But for now, we'll just keep with this number because this will definitely let us have um, liquid water that, that we know existed on Mars. If you watched any of my previous videos on, on Mars, we, um, we've discovered that Mars even had tsunamis there. At least two mega tsunamis happened on the surface 
and there was a very very large ocean in the northern part of the planet that we're going to create right now by increasing the amount of water so here we go so this is about okay maybe a little bit too much and here we go this is about as realistic as it probably was back then there was a very large ocean in the north probably some islands and continents here and then a very large continent in the south and a, like a lake or an, um, a sea uh, that it's basically surrounded and there was a very large canyon like structure here with a lot of water and this is the largest volcano in uh, in our solar system known as Olympus Mons. It's actually like over 20 kilometers or close to 20 kilometers in height. Um, so this is what the Martian surface looked like about 4.3 to 4.4 billion years ago. It was much warmer. The temperature here was at least maybe 4 to 5 degrees Celsius, possibly even warmer than that. And a lot of this temperature came from within the planet because the planet was much warmer as well. Now, with time, however, what started happening uh, are two things. Well, first of all, Mars probably didn't have magnetosphere or probably had very, very little magnetosphere. The insides started to cool down. As the insides cooled down, any magnetosphere that existed would probably disappear as well. So even if it was protecting uh, the atmosphere and water from from the solar radiation that would strip it of any kind of uh, atmospheric oxygen right away, it would probably start losing it now. So within 100 or 200 million years, maybe 300 million years, Mars has started losing its atmosphere. It's actually started losing surface pressure. As this started happening, two things followed. One of them was that the liquid water started to be broken apart by the sun. And as this happens, oxygen and hydrogen got released, oxygen got trapped in the soil and became basically a part of the soil, hydrogen escaped into the outer solar system and probably landed somewhere on like Saturn or Jupiter. And as this kind of accelerated, the planet started to cool down even more, water started disappearing even more and the surface pressure started to decrease even more, eventually reaching the point where all of the water got trapped only as ice or possibly underground, and the atmosphere decreased to the point where it's only about 1% of atmospheric pressure, with liquid water barely possible. It's actually still within limits of the so-called triple point of water, Basically, you can kind of have both liquid, solid, and gas water on the, on the surface of Mars because it has the atmospheric pressure of over 611 Pascal, which is over the so-called triple point. But it needs to be a lot warmer here for this to occur. So if Mars warms up, we might have liquid water, but it won't be very stable though. But basically, this is kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to give you an idea of what Mars may have been like. It was actually very Earth-like. As a matter of fact, it was a lot more Earth-like and a lot more terrestrial back then than Earth itself. The conditions on Mars uh, four, over 4 billion years ago were a lot more Terra-like. So this was a very, very terrestrial world where life could have developed very easily, and maybe it even has. This was so much more Earth-like than Earth, that back then was like 75 degrees Celsius on the surface. That was too hot for any kind of life to uh, develop and survive, unless it was bacterial life. So maybe, just maybe, Mars is actually where we came from. But then again, it could have been also Venus, about which we'll talk in one of the future videos. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about the history of Mars. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching various science videos and wants to learn through video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else cool, something you may have not known before. Let's finish this video by doing our favorite thing and destroying this terrestrial world with these dozens and hundreds of asteroids that are going to land on Mars and cause a few collisions. 
Now this actually did happen to Mars as well. One of the reasons why it's more flat in the north than it is in the south is because a very large rock once collided with Mars and made it kind of flattened. So now this part is deeper than this part. But that's a tale for another day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.